out of the way. Written and performed by John Miro. 16. One moment, Darius's dead brother, Charlie, was leaning over him, and flames were pouring out of Charlie's eyes surrounding him, and the next, when the flames receded, Darius found himself standing in a grassy field under a cloudy sky. It was cold out, colder than it should have been. His breath crystallized in the air. He barely noticed. His eyes were too busy cataloging the changed world around him. To the right was the Puget Sound, unmistakable with its view of Mount Rainier across the water, but it was a changed landscape. No ferries or cargo ships on the water. No piers, no buildings on the land. Trippy, huh? Charlie rumbled, suddenly standing in front of him. Darius walked past the ghost of his brother, nodding, and then some. He stared into a massive forest, untouched and ancient. Giant trees and long felled wood covered in brushes and vines, everything a deep dark green. The wind sighed through shadowed spaces between the trunks. The tree line continued to his left. He turned around in place, eyes tracing the rise and falls of trees over sprawling hills. Where the hills slid into the water of the sound was a village. Dozens and dozens of squat wooden buildings encircled each other. Smoke from stone chimneys rose to become lost in the low, dark clouds. Sirico, Charlie said behind him. Between Darius and the village were untilled fields. A rocky stretch of land lay between tidal pools at the water's edge and the fields. Not ten feet from him, Darius saw a young woman cleaning an animal skin on a waist-high rock. A drying rack fashioned of branches and twine stood beside the rock. Three more small pelts were already hung on it, fluttering in the wind. The girl wore a deerskin jacket for protection against the cold wind slicking off the sound. She focused on her work, humming a tune Darius didn't know, until a whisper floated to her out of the forest. The girl turned her head, listening. Just as she was about to return to her task, the whisper came again. She dropped her tools and walked towards the forest, listening carefully. This time, the whisper carried a tune. A curious smile framed her face. Her chin dipped and rose in time with the tune, and she walked toward Darius. The whispering tune got quieter. The woman strained to listen, and slowly, step after step, she approached the edge of the forest. Darius raised a hand in greeting. She didn't seem to notice. The tune was pretty, but the dry, scratchy voice casting it was not. Wait, Darius called, reaching out to stop the girl. His hand passed through her shoulder, and she kept walking. This shit already happened, dumbass, Charlie teased him, like a History Channel rerun. Darius balled his fists and watched, an ugly feeling gnawed at his guts. The deep pools of shadow between the trees yawned wider, deeper, blacker. The woman put a hand on the trunk of the first tree, peering into the darkness. She hesitated. But the song came again, a little faster now, a little merrier, a little more seductive. The girl stepped out of the sunlight into the shadows. Don't do it, Darius muttered, the fear inside him setting his heart pounding. His legs twitched, aching to move, to act, to protect. Away! A new voice rang out, echoing between the trees. Another woman had appeared in the field. She was older, with flecks of gray in her hair and fire crackling where her eyes should have been. Anu. Another face, but the other voice rumbling below this woman's was the same. Somehow it was Anu. The girl heard this warning and turned, mouth falling open in surprise. She didn't see shadows around her deepening, stretching out to surround her. Darius did, and his heart hammered in his chest as he watched more shadows, like special effects from some horror movie, encircle the woman. The older woman raised her hands above her head, and light flared from them, brighter than stadium floodlights, brighter than the sun on snow. 
The girl screamed, terrified, blocking the light with both hands, but otherwise unhurt. A cold, keening wind blew out from between the trees. The girl stumbled to her knees. Behind her, the forest seemed to stretch out for her. The darkness between each branch and trunk widened like a gaping maw full of broken teeth. Away! Anu bellowed again, and the shadow and dark whispers shrank from her light and command. A shriek of pain shook the trees and cracked branches. A rumble like thunder echoed from the forest. But in moments, the motion of the trees subsided. The unnaturally dark clouds in the sky above broke apart. By then, the girl had run for the village, screaming. Anu lowered her hands and staggered a step, then straightened again. The crack of branches shattering and crashing sounds of massive things came again from the forest, but this time from behind the woman. A snarl formed on her face, and she turned. Oh, this part's good, Charlie whispered in his ear. Darius saw treetops sway in the distance. Dust rose above the forest on a nearby rise. The sound and the motion raced forward impossibly fast. Centuries-old trunks were toppled by something, many somethings, loosing new thunder as the canopy of green collapsed, signaling the stampeding thing's approach. Birds fled in a cloud of white and din of warning cries. Darius heard a roar he'd heard only once before, and finally the trees at the mouth of the forest fell. But he could see nothing. A ferocious cold wind rose and whipped the dust and debris of the forest's destruction on a collision course with Anu. Shattered trunks, a cloud of earth, jagged branch spears, a storm of devastation roared forward. The only hint of the dark shapes within was the terrifying shadows they cast. Anu stood calmly before the storm and waited. Darius fought down his own urge to run, looking from the oncoming violence to the slight frame of the woman. Quarterback snap, Charlie whooped. Darius blinked. The thing that looked like his brother was right. Anu had mimed a perfect, powerful lob, though her hand was empty. A sudden countering wind blew off the Puget behind her, whipped past Anu, and stopped the oncoming train of destruction cold blowing the wind, dust, and debris from the charge back into the forest and revealing a nightmare. Dozens and dozens of the elephant-sized black and gray things pounded tentacles into the ground in fury, contracting and tremoring powerful muscles beneath wet, rippling hides in powerful efforts to resist the wind summoned by Anu. Their heads cracked open revealing concentric rings of fangs and smaller lashing tentacles in the place of tongues. Thick ropes of saliva flew from their mouths, and the things screeched like angry birds. Behind them rolled and leaped the smaller monsters, the rolling balls of tentacles and fangs. And there were other things, too, packed so tightly Darius couldn't tell where one ended and another began. Until the wind began to blow them apart. Worms as tall as houses contracted and leaped forward only to roll back onto the legs of the larger creatures that had come through the storm in the lab on sublevel 8. Flying things the size of unmanned aerial vehicles with serrated wings and lashing tails. They tumbled from the air, crashing in vast numbers against what Darius first thought was a small hill, until it tumbled too, its starfish shape the size of a mobile command center rolling end over end, crushing its brethren. There were other things, too. Oil slicks that contracted like a wave and leaped only to be splashed back by the wind. A centipede longer than a double-length bus was folded in half, untold numbers of pincers going still, as its spine must have been shattered. The world spun as he cataloged the nightmares. Until... The soldier took over, and Darius felt his fear fade away, replaced by a cold, calculating part of him. These things had killed his people. He watched every movement, seized the chance to study the threat. The heads of the large ones flapped open, whipping in the wind, their tentacled mouths spewing, booming roars that became moans of frustration as they stumbled over the worms and the smaller things. 
Anu roared right back, throwing both hands behind her head and into the creatures. This time, lightning crashed into the things along with the wind, and steam rose from charred flesh. More lightning struck, Anu's double-voiced roar becoming an ear-splitting, rage-filled weapon of its own. And yet more lightning struck, exploding the creatures like watermelons smashed on sidewalks. The few things that survived howled and retreated, leaving the woman panting, arms still raised above her head, alone in the field. But once more Anu summoned lightning, and it danced above the rotting night-born corpses, setting them ablaze. After the final body disappeared behind a wall of smoke, Darius turned to his brother. Charlie smiled. She a badass. Darius just nodded, too overloaded trying to process all he had seen to say more. His brother put his hand over his heart and fixed him with a proud smile. Badass like you, little brother, Charlie said. The fires poured from his eyes again, erasing Darius's vision of another world. You have been listening to Out of the Way, an urban fantasy portal adventure. Written and performed by John Miro. Opening theme, Gotham Licious. Closing theme, Urban Gauntlet by Kevin McLeod. Learn more at incompetech.com. For more information, visit servingworlds.com.